Dropping into 2023. Uh, Happy New Year, folks. Welcome to the EMBN Show. Uh, get up too much over the over the holiday? Uh, yeah, do you know what, mate? It was quite relaxed. I had a bit of house renovations here, got a little ride in here and there, and mm. just took it easy. Yeah, it was all good. Yourself? Yeah, quiet, you know, there it is. Uh, we won't go into that. <laughs> uh, you say a bit of ride in. Now, that actually links in with today's show, where okay. we're, we're going to start the year, you know, we're going to start to load down and build it up. So, what type of bike do you ride most? We're going to be talking short travel ENTBs today. Interesting, yes. Um, obviously, I know you. I know you've got a fleet of bikes, Rich. Yeah, but, I got the um, odd one. What you know? What what is short travel? Do you think? So I would say short travel to me is the one twenty one thirty mil that trail mm. bike sort of category is. It's short travel, I would say. Sort of a 120, 130 out back, and yeah, maybe yeah. a 140 odd up front. Yeah, and what would you use that bike for? It's in terms of my go-to, bud. It's like Is my, it? Yeah, it's oh, literally, wow. honestly, it's like my go-to. So if I'm just going to grab a bike from the fleet, as it were. The fleet? Yeah. Head out for a spin, <laughs> and just like bash out some miles, but want to get a bit rowdy at the same time, it's that trail bike that comes out. Interesting. Yeah. Um, now, Chris has been out at the Rock Desert looking at some short travel mm. e-mounted bikes. Let's have a look at what he found. Now, short travel doesn't have to mean lots of money either. We've got a great example of a 130 mil travel bike here from Leader Fox. Now, this is the Akron model, full aluminium chassis on this. Got some great components on here too. A Bafang motor that puts out 95 newton meters of torque, 720 watt hour internal battery. And we've got componentry on this bike from Shimano. Got a Dior drivetrain on there, 10 speed, more than capable. Uh, a good, decent coil fork up front, hydraulic disc brakes, and the price of this bike, well, it comes in at £3,100. It's got a great Bafang motor on there, great componentry, great colour scheme, and I love those town walls. And this is a prime example of a short travel e-mountain bike. This is the BH iLynx Race Carbon Edition. 120mm of rear wheel travel on this bike, and it does come in in a 100mm option too. Looking at the bike, full carbon chassis on this bike, 29 inch wheels, short travel fork up front as well to match up short rear travel. And the cockpit on this bike, nice and low, it just screams speed out to me. Battery wise on this bike, it's an internal 540 watt hour battery, optional range extender if you do want it to go bigger. And the motor on this bike, well, that is from BH as well, and that pumps out 65 newton meters from that really small unit. Now, Canyon have brought to the market the Canyon Neuron On. Now, this is a 130mm travel bike, front and rear. Now, this bike is a definite, more of an all rounder, uh, made for those all day epics out in the mountains. Uh, 29 inch wheels on this bike, Shimano EP8 motor, pumping out 85 newton meters torque. Battery wise, 630 watt hour internal battery. And the build and the componentry of this bike is tailored towards, as I mentioned, those bigger days out and that slightly more hardcore kind of trail center riding, but not, again, for those bike parks. You want something like the Torque for that. But the Neuron On, definite great all rounder, 130 mil travel. So a bike such as this medium Canyon Neuron On has a head angle of 67.5 degrees. And this gives a really direct feeling steering, even at slow speed. The seat angle comes in at 74.5 degrees. Now this gives a really balanced ride. You're right in the midpoint of the bike, which aids getting that weight forward for climbs. Chainstay length, 440 mil. Again, designed for the best of both worlds to climb and descend well. Rich, it's interesting, isn't it? I think, I think what we've seen in the past 12 months yep. is brands such as TQ, as Fazua, coming out with the, the lightweight motors, 50 yeah. newton meters, 60 newton meters. And with that comes a lighter weight bike. And a lot of these lighter weight bikes do tend to be short of travel. So for example, you know, the Scott Lumen, which we looked at before Christmas yep. on the show, on that very quiet show that me and you had before <laughs> Christmas. Uh, that's like that's that's like 130 mil travel. Yeah. That's a that's a cross country bike, isn't it? Do you Oof, think, is, borderline, is, yeah. Is where where is the boundary when where cross country meets trail? It's interesting. So for me in the e-bike world, I would say on a full powered bike, this is my opinion, a full powered bike needs i would say a 150 at minimum i think i'm with you i think i'm with yeah, you because yeah because yeah, you've yeah. got that added battery weight that motor weight yeah and i think a sh if you were to go shorter travel than that i think you're just blowing through in personal I think experience you're, right. I think you're just you're smashing right. through it too much and i think with with the higher power motors you know it doesn't really matter that much between 
120 and 150, yeah. you might as well go for the longer travel. 100%. Because it's going to be the same time of the climbs. It's yeah. just going to give you that bit more, really. Yeah. Whereas those lighter weight, those sort of mid power to light, like low end power, lightweight kind of uh, e bikes with the yeah. lesser travel, well, then you, they, they lend itself, they do ride more like a normal bike. And that's what they're designed for. Yeah, they're, exactly, they're, yeah. They're designed as a stepping stone in between, you know, uh, mountain bike and full power. They're like uh, the, e the mountain bike. bikers e-bike. Does that make sense? Well, I'm a mountain biker. You make it sound as if I'm not a mountain biker. Steve, look, we were going like, we to ease into New Year's, Steve. Come on. Well, look, I didn't get that invite to I, that party. You, <laughs> uh, you <laughs> know, it's all coming out now, isn't it? <laughs> You know what I mean. Camp, I thought we were friends. The dude. people go. I thought we were friends. <laughs> we are. I wanted to know how close we really were. Yeah, we are. <laughs> but it's, the, you know, the people going from like just riding an a, a standard an analog, but do we call them analog bikes? Call them whatever you want. Some people a call them muscle bike. bikes, don't a they? Muscle bike? Which that's nonsense, no, isn't it? We ain't going with that mm. one. But those people going from a normal bike and they might be like, I want to try an e bike, but I don't think I want that big old full mm. power tank of a bike just yet. Well, they're not all tanks, Rich. Flipping X, Steve. <laughs> We're gonna have you after this you know, show. E mountain bikes, they come in all shapes and I sizes. I know, that's what I'm trying As to say. As you know from those parties you've been to over Christmas. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> But I just, I think that, like you said, they're a good stepping stone. They are step indeed. Step on you in a moment. But as you say, the Rich, mm. I think they're, you know, short traveler, normally yep. stepping stone bikes, they are the lower powered, you know, yep. the TQs and the Fazuas yeah, yeah, and the sure. Levo SLs and bike like that. Uh, so folks, let us know if you've got a short travel e-mountain bike. Time for your comments. Mm. And now before we go into comments, I've got a question for you. Now, yep. I, we don't catch up that often. Um, Electronic or cable operated? Because the, because the comments we're talking about are related to link glide. Yeah. Okay. So interesting. Cable. Really? But I would go I for like an, cable too. Yeah. But I would go for an electronically actuated dropper. Oh, me too. Yeah. Because but mm. I just like I think I just like that feel of when you definitively push it into gear. Yeah. Or if it's not quite shifting quite right, you push a little yeah. more, you know, you can... It's interesting because mm. I think on an e-bike, it's even more important because if, you, yeah. if you're faced with a uh, change in terrain and you've got to climb oh, yeah. and, and there's a lot of noise going on around you, yep. rocks going here and stuff like that, you know, you, you, you peak on your whatever helmet you're wearing mm. is, is catching in the wind. That would look like, silly. It would look silly, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, right? it would. Um, so let's just imagine it. So you're, yeah, you're climbing. You've got your helmet yeah. on. It's yeah, yeah. designed by a three-year-old. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, you just you're trying to shift properly. Yeah, but you can't because you haven't peak, got the, the downforce peak, from your peak, peak helping peak is you. Falling out. Anyhow, <laughs> I love the definitive click of a cable actuated shifter because yeah. you you can hear it, you can feel it, and it's yeah, like it's that more mechanical it, motion. It feels, to it. it feels like it's a little bit disconnected with electronic. Well, some of the electronic stuff. I think. Yeah, and it's more so. I ride a lot in the really bad weather, and I know. I know you ride in the stinky weather too. And you I know love when, it. And yeah. so does Louis. He does. He but you know it. when your gears and that are covered in, in gunk and it, they're, they're not quite shifting? Uh, that's like all of the time. <laughs> yeah, well, um, a, an electronically actuated shifter will just always shift that same amount all the time. Sorry. There's an echo in it. There's a nice noise. Yeah, but whereas a mechanically operated shifter, you can push slightly harder if it needs to, if it's not going up the block because it's... Yeah. Covering gunk and stuff. So I just, I say, for me, cable okay. actuated. Well, anyway. uh, related to that, uh, actually, folks, let us know if you're electronic mm. or analog, manual, yeah. electronic or manual. Uh, some great comments from you guys uh, relating to the Link Glide video, yeah. which we had on the channel uh, about three, four weeks ago. Uh, this is from um, somebody which I didn't get the name, but I like to cut and paste it. <laughs> Classic. This says from Gary. Gary. Right. Uh, this one's from Gary. Uh, I had just my. I had, this one's from Gary. I just had my first ride with the system, and it felt great. I intentionally shifted and loaded, no problems. It was hard to buy. I ordered components from different stores. Yes, it has yeah, been that is quite difficult to get hold of. New product. But, but Link Glide, just so you know, folks, is is designed so Shimano say to be three times more durable than the equivalent Shimano Hyperglide system. Uh, it de does come at a price in terms of weight, about 300 grams. Steve, don't tell them everything. They could watch the video all about it. Ah, uh, they can, yes. Good Linked point. in the description down below. They're you good. almost gave it away, sorry, mate. Sorry, Come on, right. Uh, Justin, Justin. Justin, uh, there's a new Link, sorry, there's a new Link Glide cassette which doesn't weigh as much as this anchor. Seems they've replaced the steel spider with aluminium, making it about 200 grams less. 
maybe not important on an e-bike, but I'm planning to change XT. I'm planning to change to XT12 speed out for the Link Glide oh, 11 do speed. Do you know what? I, have, I did not know that there was a lighter version. Crikey, I missed that one. Uh, Justin, thanks so much for uh, pointing that one out. Uh, and then Martin Schaefer. Uh, this is this is in relation to the Orbea Rise, which we had oh, on the channel. We do like uh, it. The Orbea Rise really has an 85 newton meter motor, and it's a lot lighter than the Wild. But yes, it is getting very close. This is relating to what we talked about: mm. is where is the boundary between yeah. uh, between between cross country and trail? Because and there's another question is related on the motor because the Orbea Rise has got the modified Shimano EP8 motor, it's called the EP8 RS. Yes, yeah. So, it's, things are becoming blurred, aren't they? Yeah, it's, it's always a tricky one with progress and development in anything, isn't it? Because people, they go, oh, well, I want the battery lot. No, sorry, they'll be like, I don't want the power, but I don't, I want a bit of a ba more battery or, do you know what I mean? Or you're like, yeah. oh, I want the power, but I don't want the weight of a bigger battery. So that's where like, the, you know, and it just, it blurs everything. I, I think, I think, People buying e-mountain bikes have got much more of a headache than those buying mountain bikes, would you say? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think it's because there's, I mean, you've got all the standard numbers you, you stress about, like your sizing, your reach, your head angles, your chain stays, and, and then you go, oh, wow, now I need to think about motor. I need to think about battery size. Rich, and you've, mi you've missed one very key part of the decision-making process. Uh, why didn't I just buy a normal bike? No, what, oh. what does it look like? Well, warming, warming our way into the new Look year. At this. We've got some Hawaiian shots in Where in the World. Uh, but before that, we have got Chris out in Inspiration Point, Santa Barbara. Again, another amazing American name. Inspiration Point. Yeah, I like it. He's on his Turbo Levo Comp Alloy, uh, and it looks amazing. I wish it looked quite like that here. It doesn't today, does it, sadly? It doesn't today, no. no. Uh, this next one, uh, Rich. Mind-blowing. This is in Hawaii, in Yokohama Beach. And this is AA. Now, we had AA on the EMBN show before Christmas, uh, featuring this beautiful, did, didn't he? beautiful track rail with a kind of a bronze down tube. You can't actually see it no. quite as much in this shot. No, it's like two, it's like different sided, isn't it? But I like it, actually. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe he took the cover off another track rail. Can you, I guess you could do that, can't you? You could do that, couldn't you? Mm, Didn't think interesting. Of that. Uh, and then Very we've nice. got uh, Guado, uh, sorry, we've got Bartos out in Guado, Plencia Castilla e Leon in Spain. Wow. Low. Did you, like that quite low. Did you like the pronunciation then? It was a pronunciation, yes. Uh, next up, we've got John on his specialised Levo FSR 18 plate on that one in Pemberton. Look at the size of that tree. It's a big tree. It's Massive. a bird. Have you ever been to. Uh, Yosemite. Have yes, I the ever trees? been to Yosemite? Steve. No. No. Is it nice? Big trees. Yeah. Big massive. trees. Big rocks. Whew. Wow. Very nice. Don't forget, keep your where in the world pictures coming in because these are absolute bangers. Yeah. Steve, there is no star bike this week because it's a new year and you're all stars. But mm. there will be one next week, so don't forget. Send in those star bike pictures of yours yeah. to the uploader down below. Absolutely. Uh, the star of this week's show is going to be my colleague who's going to pronounce the uh, locations of the first bike in this week's oh. fault, first bike fault shot of the year. Well, Richard, uh, after you, I think, on this one. Okay, so this is from Jamie on his 2021 Cube Stereo. Yes, but we know that, don't we? All right. In Broadcan by Balater. First Munro of the day. Do you know what Munro is, Steve? Yes, I do. What is it? It's a uh, Scottish Mountain over 3,000 feet. Yes, correct. I thought you said meters then. I like this. This is, um, no, I like the tan walls. I like the picture, the lake, or the lock, I should say. He, he's, he's, he's hiding from the subject, isn't he? Okay, we've got some locations here, Richard. What, the first one is Broad Cairn. Yeah, Cairn that's Banner, what I said. And then the second was Cairn and Tan Oh, I didn't read Saigat that far. Moor. And then what's the one after Tan Saigat Moor is Khan Echoiri. Khan Echoir. Yeah. Boydich. Boydich. Yeah. And finish with Loch Nagger. There you go. Stunning, yeah. iconic e-mountain bike terrain. Mm, unlike our pronunciations then, sadly. Yeah. But that is pretty cool. That is a great picture and a great one. Is it a wolf with. whistle to start with? But it is nice. Okay. This is Anthony, Giant Rain E plus two, King Lake, Victoria, Australia. Uh, that's a beautiful shot, Richard. 
Indeed. Okay, next up, we sort of calm it down a little bit. Steve, you all good? Yeah, good. I need, I need, I need, yeah. Leon. Le this is Leon's Trek Rail 9.9 .9 XTR Harbourboard Farm Trail Napier, New Zealand. Very nice. I'm liking the Zeb. Mm -hmm. I'm liking the big, you know, chromed out Trek on there. That's a cool looking bike. What do we reckon? Super nice. <laughs> Uh, Robert, giant rainy patoons, custom grass, around the chosen empty trick, Australia. Uh, took my custom rain out for a solo shakedown ride. <laughs> yeah, it's cool, isn't it? I'd like, I, to I get... I'd like to see the bike stood up a bit yeah, more. Yeah, it's nice though, it's, it's nice, 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 but it's not super nice. And I think the next shot, Andrew's special Ooh. turbo in uh, San Luis Obispo. Bispo. What a spot. Can on Highway that? 1, have you been there? I've not, no, is it nice? It's good, it's, it's where. What's that company? Isn't the design based in San Luis? Who's right. the guy? Who's the I've never guy been, that so lives you might on the hill? Person. Okay. Uh, but it is. I love the light. I love the light. It's a super nice for oh, sure. It's very nice. Oh, wow. Fantic. Fantic. Fantic in Santa Cruz, Emma McCrary, and you were on trail inspect intersection. Ooh. You can't be at a good intersection. It's a nice shot. Uh, and next up is in the Isle of Sk Sky Needles, Newport Mega Watt. Oh, yeah, I like the style. I like it. Because I like the anodized purple hubs. Mm. And I think the Megawatt's a great bike. I like the picture. He's obviously, you know, exploring. Did I tell you about this one time I went into sort of the Swiss and Italian Alps for this amazing adventure? And it was unbelievable. You should go there. It sounds like a trip I planned last year, but never managed to get on it. Very uh, good. Finally, folks, we've got Ooh, like we've it. got a mix of location, but snow. We've got snow in California. This is wow. in uh, <coughs> Sky Forest. Yeah, that's pretty good. Cool, another, another good name. Well, getting Randy in the Sky Forest. Not for the first time, Steve, eh? Absolutely. Uh, Randy in the Sky Forest. Uh, fantastic. Yeah. And that is it. That is Amazing uh, the first uh, EMBN show of 2023. Thanks for joining us, folks. Uh, let's know what travel e-mountain bike is mm. suitable for the riding you do. Short travel, long travel. I'm a long travel kind of guy, I think. But you said earlier your go-to bike was a 130. On an e-bike. We're, we're This is the NBN lens. Ah, uh, okay, right, okay, right. Yeah. Okay, so there you go. We have swung into 2023. See you next week.